I've went off Pete for a bit. Uh, it sometimes happens, Pete fatigue. But this has brought me right back, this, this example. Hey, how's it going? And welcome to Whiskey Whims with me, Stuart. Today we've got Stosha, which is a peated Bunahaven, uh, about 35 ppm to 45 ppm of peat parts per million, which is roughly in line with Ardbeg. This is cash strength, non chill filtered, no added colouring. It comes from AD Ratray and it's their cast collection. They've got different collections on their website, cast collection, vintage cast collection, which is a more can, kind of premium bottles. And then they've also got one called Warehouse Collection, which I'd advise checking out because their cask ends or the, the bins as they call them or something like that, uh, which is the, the, the end of a cask and they put them into bottles. And sometimes they're not great, but sometimes they're really, really quite something special and they're quite uh, good value for money. So this is £45, six year old, big bold six year old statement on there. It's 59.1% ABV and I think it casts strength and the age, that £45. So far, just looking at it, if I saw it on the shelf or on the website, that seems to be a decent value for money. Uh, but obviously it depends what the whiskey's like. So I got this recommended to me by, we have a, a WhatsApp group called TAIBS, you might see some hashtags on Instagram, and that's, we are, well, we're a WhatsApp group of friends, and it's called Taps Aff International Bottle uh, share or split, which is basically we, we put some money in a kitty and we split some bottles. Anyway, this was recommended to me by Mark, uh, Mark Kane, who's also a Patreon. He recommended this to, to myself and to others in the group. And we all bought a bottle, and as you can see, I've had quite a bit out of it. So I'll try not give too much away. 155 bottles, bourbon exclusively, and like I said, Buna Haven, so it's Isla. And yeah, we'll get down to the, the nose, the palate and the finish and see if it's a whiskey win or a whiskey bin and if you're new here how I rate my whiskies I don't use a scoring system I basically say would I buy it again would I recommend it and do I think it's worth it if I at least get two out of three or the bottle gets two out of three of them then it's a whiskey win if it only gets one then it's a whiskey bin uh, there are special circumstances but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it so straight away on the nose nice oily uh, brine, almost um, fish-like, like a little greasy, like a greasy fish, like a chip shop or something like that, a kind of chippy fish, uh, so yeah, like a chip shop. There's a little kind of herbaceous element to it as well, it's quite in line with um, Isla uh, so far already with the brininess. And the, the herbaceous element, which I get a lot in Ardbeg, quite a, a herbal. I'm not sure if I could pick something specific, but we'll just go with herbaceous. It's quite, uh, yeah, quite herbal. It's a little nippy on the nose or a little uh, tickly on the throat when smelling it. The ABV is slightly present, but it's not that off-putting, to be honest. Possibly something like uh, acorn or something like that. No, not acorn. What's the one? The is it, is it pine, co pine cone? There's like a in fact. No, it's not even that strong. Mm, there's there's it's like something that grows on trees. <laughs> I'm terrible. I don't know what the. It's not as strong as pine, uh, but it, it's something along those lines. It's quite a soft kind of. What would you even call those? Uh, what do you, what is a pine cone? Uh, is that a seed? Uh, is, is it, it's not a flower, is it? But yeah, something like that, something along those lines, kind of like chestnut, almost, uh, that kind of sense. I don't even know if acorn has a smell, but something like that is reminiscent of like a tree, uh, the smell of a tree and the, the things that grow on it. <laughs> Random, but yeah. Uh, a little smoke, but nothing. It's not like overly peaty, it's not overly smoky on the nose. I think it, there's like a creamy peat there possibly, but it's quite subtle I feel on the nose. Uh, but yeah, the, there is a smoke. We'll go with the palate, quite a 
interest in those, quite, I wouldn't say one dimensional, but quite consistent. It's not overly complex, there's not too much going on, other than the kind of the fishiness and the peat. Uh, but that's quite atypical with, with Ayla's. So we'll go to the palette. Mm. <laughs> the palate is what drives this whiskey. It's cracking. It's actually so oily, that brininess again. It's It coats the mouth. It's nice and, I want to use the word creamy, but it's not like creamy. It's more like voluptuous. Uh, maybe it is creamy, like a butter scent. It's like buttered popcorn. It's quite reminiscent of the Kilkerran Heavily Peated Batch 1 which I'm sure is also cast strength, also young and also bourbon matured. It's very, yeah, very creamy, very like melted, uh, a big blob of butter uh, melted on some popcorn or something like that. Very buttery, very creamy, very oily in the mouth, all lovely mouth feeling. There's maybe some fish again, uh, linking back to the, uh, the nose, maybe uh, like a white fish, uh, maybe cod or something or something, not like a, a, a smelly fish, but just a kind of, uh, subdued fish. There's a little peppercorn on the palate, a little a little spice, nothing, once again, it's not, this isn't an offensive whiskey. The ABV is high and it has got a little bit of a kick, but it's not too punchy, I, I feel. Um, I do drink high ABV whiskey, but I don't think this is too punchy. This for me is like an easy sipper, I, I, could, I could drink this uh, I could I could probably dangerously drink the rest of this bottle in one night, I feel. We've but I've almost done it before with a, another Stosha. Uh, in fact, I've got it here, I'll just show you. We bought this uh, Stosha one night and Stevie and I finished half of it in a night. So it was quite surprising. 46% uh, ABV that one is, but this is the same. It's quite easy drinking. Uh, sorry, going off on a tangent, but it's just easy drinking quite. Uh, it doesn't seem too, like I said, offensive. What else have we got in the palate? I'm trying to think if there's any fruit. There's a little sweetness, but it's like a dull, Sweetness, so I'd probably say something like pear. It's not, yeah, it's, it's the, the, the flavours are quite sub subtle, not necessarily subdued because they are bold, but it's not anything too in your face, if that makes sense. It's not like really an overly sweetness, uh, so I'd say like pear. The buttery elements, something to focus on, the, the creamy, oily mouthfeel, uh, quite nice. There's peat there. Uh, an earthy, and I kind of like um, it's almost like something that, yeah, I'm, I'm going. To, I was about to say it's almost like something that grows in the ground, but peat does come from the ground. But there's yeah, there's a real earth element here with the peat. Uh, something like vegetal, something veg vegetal growing in the ground. Uh, so not herbaceous like the nose, but yeah, vegetal. Continuing on from kind of smoke peat, uh, smoke from the nose, I don't know why I'm moving my hands so much, but smoke from the nose, uh, I'll try to think if there's anything smoky in the palate. Like I said, that fish, but it's not smoked fish. I don't think it's that smoky in the palate. We'll, we'll go again. Maybe something like, I don't know, I always say like toasted, rather than smoked, something toasted. Like, uh, it's, I want to say, it's like butter, it's something, what could that be? I think I mentioned before, like, toasted uh, halloumi, or like grilled halloumi, but it's not that, it's, it's some, I've said this before and I never know what it is, it's, it's like, it's got the creaminess of that, but grilled, uh, so, so maybe somebody could <laughs> uh, get into my mind and try and understand what I'm trying to say and please put it in the comment, but. It's something grilled, something kind of creamy, velvety, that feel and that taste, but it's not like cheesy, but it's creamy. I, I can't really, I can't really picture something, nothing's coming to mind, but yeah, something grilled and creamy, just like a little uh, crust on it, a little uh, burnt crust, num num num. It's very tasty, like I said, easy going. The finish, yeah, the finish is strong, long, uh, there's a, a, a nuttiness coming through, a real what would it be? Yeah, I'm just going to say peanuts. It's just the peanut skin, uh, or just peanuts in general. No, no, I think we can go with, let me, let me just get, I'm, I'm not going to go peanut. I don't like peanuts right. It's, 
It's cashew nut. I'm going to say cashew nut. It's like cashew nut in the finish. Um, yeah, so it's long, it's strong, bold in the finish. Still creamy, that, that oiliness, still carrying it. It feels like it's quite a well put together whiskey. It's not anything um, kind of jumbled up. It's not, it's, it's quite well, is it conjuncted? Conjunct, con, it's quite well constructed. I'm just going to say constructed. I'm trying to think of the big, a big boy word, but I can't think of it. <laughs> it's well put together, well constructed, and it's not like misjoined or anything. It's not, it's, it's just, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I've got to say. Is there anything else in the palate other than the creaminess, brininess? Any fish? No, once again, just the, sorry, the finish, just the vegetal. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you've noticed this latter part of the review. I've kind of caught, caught off track. My mum came in uh, halfway through and kind of interrupted me and caught me off guard. So uh, she was dropping off something. But yeah, I think I'm done with it. I don't know if we'll, uh, read, if we'll uh, read the back of the bottle, see what it says. Uh, Colour, white wine. Yeah, cool. No forest, smoked mussel and beach bonfire. Yeah, I can, I can sort of understand the smoked muscle in a sense, but I didn't think it was that smoky on the nose. Palette, tangy pear, I think I said pear, and seared scallop wrapped in bacon. Didn't really get much bacon, to be honest, or scallop. I got seared something, I'd say seared like a nice, I suppose a scallop creamy. It's got that kind of texture, but no, I, I'd say seared something. Finish, strong, youthful peat, balanced beyond its years. Yeah. If, if, yeah, they've 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 described it way better than I have. This is balanced beyond its years. It's surprising. It's only six year old. It doesn't feel too youthful. It's not. I think the peat carries it. And I've said this before in reviews that peat really helps young whiskey. So, uh, would I buy this again? I would. At forty five pound, I would buy this again. Do I think it's worth it? Once again, at forty five pound, <laughs> yes, it's a steal. This is cheap. For a single malt, cast strength, uh, well presented, there's no gimmick, there's no... You've got Ardbeg that's a similar peat, but you've got all that marketing and all that gunf. This is just simple, stripped back, uh, it's got a, a sleeve, it doesn't really need the sleeve, I don't put it in the sleeve. Uh, on the back it's just got a bit of AD Rattery, but there's nothing trying to push this with... Um, maritime feel or maritime advertisement or anything like that it's just the bottle it's just the whiskey that's carrying this and it speaks a lot for itself uh, more than i could describe or put into words uh, more than i could conjure up so i would say you need to try this <laughs> if you haven't you should try some stosha i wasn't really uh, aware of stosha i wasn't i was aware of it but it wasn't something i was buying into since buying this bottle, I've bought a further two bottles, uh, not the same one, just different ones, and I'm really finding a love, a passion for Stosha. I've went off peat for a bit, uh, it sometimes happens, peat fatigue, but this has brought me right back, this this example, this, yeah, it, it is an example to lead by this type of whiskey. So, it's a whiskey win, and I actually think, because of what it's made me do in the sense of explore, uh, another distillery that or a, 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 I've had been a having but I've not really had the, the peated. So the fact that it's made me explore another distillery, more whiskey, different bottles, different bottlers, because uh, this one's AD Rattray, the other one's Signatory and I can't remember what the other one is. I think this is my whiskey of the year. £45 is a big uh, factor to my whiskey of the year. I think the Ben Nevis last year was round about that price. And I think I have to, when I'm thinking of my whiskey of the year, my factors, my, what I factor in for whiskey of the year, it's not a whiskey that's came out that year. It's a whiskey that I've maybe bought that year and enjoyed that year. It could even be a whiskey I've bought three years ago and only just opened. But it's a whiskey that I consistently come back to and enjoy throughout the full year. And also the, the, the price has got to be a big consideration for me regardless of secondary market, more RRP. So I think that's my whiskey of the year. Uh, I think this video's maybe been a little bit longer and went off on a little tangent. But anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Stuart, this has been Whiskey Wins. I'll see you later.